Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a fantasy adventure film, The Ash Lad in the Hall of the Mountain King. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins through a narration of a tale about a troll called Mountain King. It's believed that the Mountain King is hiding its mountainous hormones in a faraway mountain, waiting for a princess to turn 18 without getting married. According to the story, the mountain troll will wake up from deep sleep to abduct the princess, and it will marry her and turn her into its hormone slave. Scared of this event, the king set a marriage for his daughter, who is also considered the princess, before she turns 18 the next day. The king sets the princess to be married to a prince from another kingdom. The prince arrives in the kingdom and introduces himself to the king. The prince acts arrogant and looks down on everyone. During dinner, the prince boasts to the audience. He tells a story of how he managed to knock down a bear using his bare hands and strength. The princess appears to be not impressed by his behavior, so she walks out of the dinner and expresses her disagreement with the marriage. The king then scolds her and forces her to marry the prince without her consent. Without a choice, the princess runs away from the kingdom to escape from the unwanted marriage. She rides a horse and proceeds to wander around the woods. There, she almost hits a young man named Espen, accidentally making him fall into the river. Espen is a son of a peasant who just came from the market to buy food for his family. Espen gets soaked in the water, so he playfully soaks the princess in return. He then introduces himself to her. However, she is annoyed by his naughty behavior. As a response, he offers her food. She cannot resist it, since she's too hungry and has not eaten anything after she ran away. They get along for a while, and after that, the princess rides her Ferrari horse to leave. Meanwhile, Espen returns to his home. There his father and his two brothers, Purr and Pal, are busy doing chores to build their house. His brothers are annoyed with Espen, because he's always tasked to do the easier chores while they are always doing the hard ones. They get angrier at him upon learning that he only brought a soggy potato because he gave the rest of the food to the princess. His father then asks his brothers to hunt for food instead. Later when the dark comes, Espen is facing the fire in the furnace, when he suddenly feels that the ground is shaking. He believes that a troll has to wake up, so he gets the metal rod and swings it around, acting like he's fighting the troll. Unfortunately, the metal rod from the furnace sets a cloth on fire. He tries to set it off, but the fire quickly spreads and eventually burns their entire house. Meanwhile, the princess who's still wandering around feels something wrong around her. Suddenly, her Ferrari horse runs away out of fright. It turns out, the Mountain King abducts her. The following day, Espen's father and brothers come back from hunting food. To their surprise, their house is already in ashes after being burned due to Espen's doing. Their possessions are now in ashes, and even his dead mother's image is also burned, which greatly saddens his father. His father then calls him an ash lad out of frustration. After a few moments, the prince and his soldier guards pass by them. Apparently, the entire kingdom is already looking for the princess, and the king offers half of the kingdom and the princess to whoever can find her. Knowing that Espen's father instructs Purr and Pal to search for the princess, since it's their only chance to rebuild their home. He then gives his last remaining penny to them. Meanwhile, he tells Espen that he's now on his own starting from that moment. Espen then follows his brothers on their mission to find the princess. Along the way, Espen finds a broken mirror and a helmet. He picks it up, thinking that he might need it for something. His behavior greatly annoys his brothers. Soon after, he hears an old woman asking for help. He then decides to help the old woman while his brothers continue walking. The old woman's long-running nose is stuck in a log, so he picks up a hatchet to crack the wood, and the old woman manages to be free from being stuck. She says that she's hungry and thirsty. Without hesitation, he gives his soggy potato to her. He says that he's looking for the princess. She says that the Mountain King has taken her away, and he can do nothing to save her. But he is determined, so the old woman gives him a magic map that will lead to a sword that can damage the skin of the Mountain King. He talks to the magic map, and it shows the path he needs to take. In the kingdom, a servant reports to the king that they find a giant tooth. This confirms the king's suspicion that the Mountain King has taken the princess away. At night, the princess wakes up, and she finds herself trapped in the cave of the Mountain King. The following day, the two brothers find golden apples in a basket, and they eat all of them. In a few moments, they begin laughing like crazy, and beautiful young women come to invite them to their homes to eat more. Espen also finds a golden apple, and he begins hearing birds chirping. He follows the sound, and he soon finds his two brothers eating along with the beautiful women. He then joins them in the feast. But soon enough, he realizes that they are hallucinating from eating the golden apples. Apparently, the beautiful women are witches, while the delicious foods on the table are already rotting. 
Knowing this, Espen immediately leaves, and he drags the two brothers along with him. They are still under the hallucination spell, and do not want to leave. So Espen slaps both of them to wake them up. They wake up from the illusion, prompting them to run their hungry stomach away with Espen. The witches chase them, but they manage to escape just in time before the passage closes. The two brothers then become thankful to Espen, and they now believe him. Espen informs them about the mountain troll. He says that people cannot see the mountain troll, because it can only go out at night. Apparently, the sunlight turns the mountain troll into a stone. They continue their journey to search for the magic sword in order to save the princess. Soon after, Pal feels tired and hungry. He sees a bar, and he decides to eat there first. Without a choice, the other two follow him. Coincidentally, the prince and his soldier guards are also eating there. The prince is determined to find the princess before anyone else. One guard sees Espen and his brothers, so he immediately reports it to the prince. As Espen talks about the magic map, the prince overhears their conversation. Knowing that the map will lead to the princess, the prince immediately talks to them. He asks Espen about the map, and offers Espen and his brothers a huge amount of money that can help them rebuild their house. But Espen does not want to surrender the princess to the prince, knowing that the prince does not have good intentions for her. Out of anger, the prince then forces Espen to give the map. Espen throws a hot soup at the face of the prince. This prompts the soldier guards to attack Espen and his brothers. Per then immediately attacks back on the soldier guards, and the fight between them erupts right in the bar. In the midst of the chaos, the prince hunts Espen with his swords. The servant throws wood at Espen in order to protect himself against the prince. After a few moments, the prince pins Espen down, but he pisses off a big man who's eating at the table. The big man then throws the skinny prince away. This allows Espen and his brothers to escape. But as they run in the woods, the prince and his doggy soldiers trace their smell like dogs and continue to chase them down. Soon after, Espen and his brothers reach a cliff without any path to run further. The prince and his soldiers catch up. But instead of giving up, Espen and his brothers jump out of the cliff and fall to the waters, allowing them to escape again. There, Per expresses his frustration to Espen for his refusal to take the money from the prince. He then asks for the map, and they continue their journey again. Along the way, Espen finds a bear skin, and he picks it up. Meanwhile, the Mountain King picks up the princess. It attempts to marry her at that time, but the princess says that they cannot marry without a wedding dress, so it drops her and puts her back in the cave. Back to the woods, Espen and his brothers reach a foggy place that blurs their vision. Espen's foot gets stuck for a while, causing him to lose sight of his brothers. Just then, the prince and his soldiers find his brother, and they abduct both of them. On the other side, Espen finds the marsh where the magic sword is hidden. He dives in, and the magical creatures that guard the sword attempt to stop him. But in the end, he manages to get the sword and escape from them. Espen continues his journey, and eventually, he finds his two brothers with the prince and the soldier guards. He wears the bear skin and pretends to be a bear. He charges at the prince and his men, which scares the shit out of them, thinking that he's really a bear. The prince who claims to defeat a bear also runs his panicking ass away out of fear. The big soldier bumps him out, which removes the bear's skin, revealing his true self. They then hold him captive together with his brothers, while the prince gets the magic sword. The prince decides to bring them to the cave of the Mountain King, using them as bait. At night, the prince and his soldiers camp in the woods, while Espen and his brothers are tied in the tree. At that moment, the mountain troll arrives, prompting the prince and his soldiers to run away. Espen and his brothers are tied, so they try their best to cut the rope using a small stone. This allows them to escape just before the Mountain King can drag them. After that, the Mountain King continues hunting until it finds the soldier guards who try to fight back. Unfortunately for them, the Mountain King smacks them to death. On the other side, the prince hides in the treetop. His servant tries to hide from him, and he kicks the servant away. The Mountain King manages to find him, and it takes him away. Soon after, the Mountain King instantly drags Pal away, and it takes both Pal and the prince back to its cave. Meanwhile, Espen and Per are left alone to save the princess and Pal. Per uplifts the spirit of Espen, saying that he believes in the capability of Espen to save them. They try to search for something that can be useful for them. Fortunately, Espen manages to find the magic sword. After that, they continue their journey to find the hideout of the Mountain King. Soon after, Espen and Per arrive at the Hall of the Mountain King. There they find corpses, which is a sign that it's a dangerous place. They find Pal's shoe, which confirms that it must be the Hall of the Mountain King. Espen ties a rope that will guide them back to the exit. After that, they continue searching along the hallways. Just then, Espen almost falls into a hole that leads to the cave where the Mountain King kept the princess, the prince, and pal. They throw a rope in order to drag them out of the cave one by one. 
During the process, they suddenly hear the Mountain King arrive, but all of them manage to get out of the cave, and they proceed to get out of the Hall of the Mountain King. As they arrive at the exit, they find the body of the Sleeping Mountain King blocking it. They then try their best to silently pass through the Sleeping Mountain King, in order not to wake it up. But the shitty prince accidentally hits it, and it wakes up in anger. They then immediately run to the exit, as the angry Mountain King chases them down. They eventually get out of the hall. However, they find themselves on a cliff, which prevents them from running down. Without a choice, they continue climbing upward to escape. They try their best to climb quickly, as the Mountain King is already behind them. They eventually reach the mountaintop, where they can no longer run away, while the prince decides to hide behind a stone on the mountainside. The Mountain King arrives, leaving Espen no choice but to fight back against it. He slashes the Mountain King using the sword, which further agitates it. In response, the Mountain King wipes his smelly ass away. It's not wipe, but swipe. Because of that, the magic sword falls down the cliff. Per throws a stone at the Mountain King, and it also swipes but not wipes him. He falls to a hard stone, causing him to pass out. Espen recovers from the injury, and he comes up with a plan to defeat the Mountain King. He tells the princess to distract it with her smelly hormones, and she obliges. He then gets the mirror he picked up earlier out of his bag. After that, he redirects the sunlight from the rising sun to immediately hit the Mountain King. This causes the Mountain King to growl in pain. After a few moments, the Mountain King finally turns into a stone. As their mission is successful, Espen, his two brothers, and the princess begin their journey back to the kingdom. Meanwhile, the prince is also walking back to the kingdom when he encounters the old woman. He asks his direction, and the old woman leads him to the place of the witches. On the other side, the princess gets back to the kingdom, and she gets reunited with his parents. The king offers Espen half of the kingdom, but he refuses to accept it. Instead, he only asks for enough money to rebuild their home and farm. The king then agrees with his request, and also says that he will allow the princess to marry whoever she wants. After that, Espen and his two brothers walk back to their home, and they reunite with their father who welcomes them back. As their father knows that Espen successfully saves the princess, their father gets proud of Espen. Later on, they rebuild their home, and the princess visits Espen. In the end, Espen spends time with the princess, while the prince spends time hallucinating with the hormone-rich witches. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.